Namaste fellow yogis. Welcome to your practice. This is the in the now moment practice. Really looking at the intentions and thy will to will thy will. Thy will is soulful. The intention is in the now. Very powerful for those who are intrepidly taking this seriously enough to like literally be here right now on that. Know that the intention to be here now is the most powerful intention. Far more powerful than the will. Sometimes I get up and my willing, you know, my soul wants to do this and wants to do that, but yet my intention in the very now moment, clearing the mind to be in the absolute, say, grounded and most supportive human I can be in that now moment is the most important piece. So being on the mat, meaning doing the yoga practice to quell the mind, to feel the body, moving it healthfully and caring for it healthfully are my intentions for today. So what do I mean by all this? While you're in practice for any kind of recovery, it is first the thought, meaning your intention, in the now moment. And then using your will, freedom, free will, to navigate it. So my intention is to do what I can do best for me in the moment, uh, really honoring, and I hold my gut, that's my personal power, really being present on the mat. Just really discerning what it is to push myself and hurt myself or to be present with my breath and mindful of my actions so that I progress, succeed in getting to where it is that maybe my other intention, which isn't so, you know, clear or powerful, is to be very, very, very healthy and to be super fit and all that stuff. That is uh, the now moment is to love myself listen to the self and to be here right now doing what it is that I am able to do in the now. Okay, so I know that's a lot of to ingest, but let's do this. Let's take a deep breath in. That's the most important thing that we could do right now. Fill the body with beautiful prana and when you exhale, think about the surrender. Think about that letting go. Think about letting go of the grip. Think about letting go of all the chaos uh, the gripping and the holding on and the, the thoughts of like just going off and just be here right now. Just be here right now. Feel the breath in your, your lungs, like right from the collarbone to the bottom ribs. Can you feel that? Right? Feel that. To be here now is the most important piece of our journey and the next moment, the next moment, the next moment. <laughs> There's a whole discussion on that one, but let's get started. So first of all, let's begin with a big old beautiful ohm, that consciousness, that love, that frequency of like vibrational light and brightness, and of course love, which I mentioned twice. Love, 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 love is the only answer. So sitting up nice and tall, reach your arms nice and bright, feel like not only, you know, the arms reaching, but feel that rib cage of yours opening up in the liver and the gallbladder, the spleen and, and, and the stomach and the kidneys, everything's opening up. And then when you exhale, sweep your arms around and draw them into your heart center and let us chant one beautiful om. Take a deep breath in, eyes can be closed. There you have it. Blinking your eyes open, let us get this party started in the now moment. So today my intention was to really work on the neck. So let's, if you're seated like I was, switch out your shins so the other one is out in front. And then wave around in your neck and your shoulders, reminding yourself that this is a yoga practice for recovery. We slow down. So if you need to sit in any variation of a cross leg -like seat, please do. And then let's start to address the neck. I'm going to turn my face towards my right shoulder reach up through this right arm and up over the crown head and grab the back of the skull, the occipital bone, the occipital bone. Tucking the head down while I maintain length in my spine and reach up through the left arm. And as much as I want to flex my neck down, I'm not forcing it, I'm gently taking my face, my nose, towards my armpit and reaching back through that left arm and playfully doing it. And when I'm tucking my head down in towards my right armpit, I'm literally 
gazing it down gently, drawing my right shoulder down as well. So there's a lot of activity going on here, and you'll feel all kinds of things. You'll feel what you're feeling. On your next in and out breath, bring your head to center. Roll your shoulders, then start to move your face towards the left shoulder. Reach the left arm up, grab a hold of the occipital, the occiput bone. Reach out through the right arm, maintaining a tall spine, toning the belly. Shoulders are down, away from the ears to your best ability. And you can feel whatever you're feeling, like, yeah, stuff may come up. You might get triggered. Feel what you're feeling. Two more breaths. Mmm, beautiful. And then on your next in and out breath, bring your head back to center, wave your arms around, and then reach them up towards the sky. And let's take our thumbs into the palm of the hands, at the hands and wrap your fingers around and like fists, press them towards the sky and then out to the sides, out to the sides and really press them out. But at the same time, hug, hug your upper arms in and press your knuckles out. Like you're doing your best to hold the walls from pressing in on you, okay? So it's a lot of isometrics. And then turn your palms down, okay? Thumbs still in your hands and then reach your pinky fingers way back, way back. So your chest gets nice and bright, but keep your ribs from popping out and tone that belly button in. And squeeze the back of your shoulder blades and then release your fingers and then roll the shoulders. And here you go again. Switch out your shins, sitting up nice and tall. Take a moment to erect your spine. And regardless of any external happenings, like my dog's barking, someone rang the doorbell, I'm still here with you. <laughs> Hopefully my daughter will take care of it. So as you switch out your shins, we're gonna do a little twist, a mindful twist. So turning the sternum, okay, and the belly button towards that right knee, sitting up as tall as you are able to, and then taking that left hand and somewhere on your thigh or your knee to really resist that thigh and that knee, however you're able to do that, and then start to circumvent the right arm back, finding your twist all the way from pubis, like just above the pubis, the abdominals, into the heart center, and then into the shoulders. So you wanna maintain the left shoulder rolling back. And then you can even place your right hand behind you as you turn your face, and we're getting into the neck, towards the left knee and then nodding your head. So find out where you're able to do this. Some of you can take your right hand into your inner left thigh. Some of you are just happy to go, whew, this is a challenge. Breathe that breath. Notice what you're noticing, but turning your face towards the left knee. Couple more breaths. Mm, feeling what you're feeling. I love to close my eyes when I'm practicing because I can feel more of the internal happenings. On your next in and out breath, come to center and play in the center, and then we're gonna twist it to the left side. So once again, however you wish to arrive there, I like to secure my right hand first, press into the right knee with the right hand, and then lean and twist, navigating my sternum and my belly button. So there's a lot of twisting action, like the whole thoracic spine, the whole lumbar spine, and then waving the left arm around and about so that you can secure it somewhere that you could get a greater twist. I like to scoop my right up, my right arm, upper arm in external rotation so that I can keep my chest broad. And as you navigate that, turn your face towards the right knee, moving it around and feeling the twist all the way up into your collarbone, the neck. Breathe your breath, keep on tucking that belly button in and turning just a little bit more so you feel the ringing out of your innards. Oh yeah. And on your next in breath, take it to center, roll the shoulders, and then let's play continuously in this area. Let's come into tabletop. So when you come into your tabletop, you may need a blanket. And if you, this is your first time with me, always begin at the bottom of the, uh, the list because, the, you know, literally of the, the visuals of the, the episodes because the most top one is the most recent. And what you want to do is maybe pick up on some of the things you might have missed if you're just jumping in, but literally have all of your yoga paraphernalia with you at all times. Block, strap, blanket, okay? No particular order that I do any of this stuff in, but yet sometimes you need to go to that very beginning and work your way up. They get composted, new stuff comes on. 
Let's take the knees back, find your tabletop. Some of you, again, your knees. If you happen to have your yoga blanket handy, put it underneath your knees. But what we're going to do is play in the shoulders. Take your forearms down underneath your shoulders, your elbows underneath your shoulders. Fuse your palms to the floor, grab the floor with your finger pads and base knuckles and draw your elbows in so that everything looks like little train tracks, that they're, they're straight, they're not splayed out and shoulders rolling forward. Then from there, let your head hang between your upper arms with your toes curled under and your knees on the mat. And then move your head around, just flexion extension, moving it around, good. And then from there, find that neutral neck and look towards your thumbs so your neck stays neutral now. Grip the mat with your hands and then slowly start to hover your knees. Keep your bum blossoming, lift your heels, and then move your chest towards your thighs. And this is where it's gonna get a little trickier. Keep on working your inner elbows in. Let the head hang between your upper arms. Pedal your feet, lift your heels, and bend your knees. And now we're just gonna in-breath, move the crown of the head towards your thumbs as you look at your toes, and exhale, move your chest towards your thighs. So you're keeping the head literally perpendicular from the mat, you're looking towards your toes, your neck is neutral, and you're moving in your shoulders, flexion and extension. Just doing that a couple of times, use your breath. I like to in-breath forward, and then exhale back. Feel those shoulders, I know, got lots of stuff going on in there today. And then slowly lower your knees, plant or flex your feet so they're flattened out, and rise up and roll those shoulders. <laughs> Did I say today shoulder day? Yeah. Good, and then come back onto your hands, Okay, tabletop. Curl the toes under and then secure your hands through the base knuckle finger pads. Press the floor away and then knit the belly button in neutral neck so you're looking straight at the mat and then we'll cover your knees for five, for four, three, two, and then slowly lower the knees. Pivot on your right knee, take your right toes off the mat like a kickstand, a bike kickstand. Then extend through the left leg in line with your right knee and left hip, straight line. And you can use the bird's eye view for that one if that works for you. And then start to open up that left shoulder. So there's not a lot of weight on your right shoulder. Some of you may need to have your hands a little bit more ahead of you. Oh gosh, there's buzzing around in my outside yard today. So please, <laughs> external happenings I have zero control over. So hopefully you can still hear me. Open up through that left arm, wave it around, reach it back. Feel the expression of your side body. Fantastic. Oh my goodness, that was so good. And then slowly exhale, left hand, left knee. Once again, secure your tabletop. And then hover the knees again for 10 this time. Keep the belly button in, keep your neck neutral. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, <laughs> three, two, and then lower the knees. This time pivoting on the left knee, left toes off the mat. Fully extend through the right leg, the inner edge of that right foot presses into the back, lengthen the tailbone, hit the belly button, in, and reach up through that left arm. Extend the neck, open your heart, breathe that breath. There's always external happenings that we will not have any control over, but we can choose to respond. Can you open up your chest a little bit more? Feel what you're feeling. My intention is to be here now and feel my body fully. It feels lovely. Sometimes it feels cranky, and I just go with the flow of that crankiness. Eventually, it shall too pass without hurting myself. Release your right hand, right knee. Secure your hands and toes, and once again, hover your knees up off the mat for five this time. Four, three, two. Lower the knees, extend the left leg straight back through the balls of the foot so you feel really strong in that left leg. And then cross the left leg all the way over to the right. Secure your hands, secure the left toes, and then hover the right knee up off the mat. Extending through the crown of the head. Press the floor away and start to hinge your hips up towards the sky. Let your head hang. It's a modified down dog. Can you lift your heels and blossom your bum? Bend your knees if you need to and just gently move your chest towards your thighs. It's just a little bit of a bounce. Remember, if flexion of your arms, that's what this position is, does not work for you so well because of issues in the tissues, come more forward, just like this. And you can still do this, okay? Slowly exhale the right knee, extend the left leg straight back, and then secure the hands and hover the right knee for five, four, three, 
three, two, lower the right knee, lower the left knee, extend the right leg straight back, got it? Really feel the strength of it, and then cross it over to the left side. So you're getting that side body twist, that lengthening into, well, think about kidney, liver, gallbladder, spleen, all of them are like, whew, thank you for the yoga practice. Curl those left toes into the mat and then start to hover the knees up, moving your chest towards your thighs, a modified down dog. You can even pedal your feet and bend your knees and swagger your hips. You do you, but really grip the mat with your base knuckle of your index finger and your thumb to create like a lobster claw so the palm is literally like a suction cup. Then on your next in-breath, bring your shoulders back over your wrists, lower the left knee, and then extend that right leg straight back, secure the toes, and now hover the left knee up off the mat for five, four, three, two, lower the left knee, lower the right knee, sit back onto your toes here, off your wrists. <laughs> you can even shake them out. So this practice for recovery is meant to be you in the moment, in the intentions of being your best self forward. Okay, so do what feels great. And if there is some pain, know that you can breathe more deeply. And if it's a pain that is not necessary, then stop and modify, okay? So there's a fine line between what is pain and discomfort. Bring your hands into your tabletop, because a lot of people stop their yoga practice or their physiotherapy because they're in pain, which is a, a big mistake because you need to move your body. This time we're gonna extend the left leg straight back, neck is neutral, looking right down at the mat between your hands and extend the right leg, left leg and right leg back, plank pose. Lift through the inner thighs, lengthen the tailbone towards your heels, extend through the crown of the head, and just press the floor away until you can smile and breathe where you know you've got this. You're not feeling heavy. So you gotta press the floor away with the index finger and thumb, lift your inner thighs, Lengthen your tailbone and then feel this length in your spine through heels and crown head for another five, four, three, two, and then lower the right knee, pivot on the right knee, take the right toes off the mat, fully extend into that left inner edge of the left foot, line it up with your right knee and open up that chest, play and wave this wonderful left shoulder around and feel that, oh, that opening of your heart, opening of your heart. Good, now we're gonna secure that right hand even more fully because now you're gonna pick up the left knee, draw the left knee in towards your chest to your best ability, hug it in, and some of you have more range of motion, make sure you find your balance through the right toes and the right hand, and just give yourself a little squeeze of that, that left leg. And then release the left leg and release that left arm in full expression. Wave them around, open up that chest, even bow them backwards and then mindfully sweep that left hand, left knee back to the mat. Fully extend both legs straight back into your plank pose, pressing the floor away, that neutral neck, thigh bones back and apart, tailbone lengthens for 10, nine. You can always lower your knees if it's too much for your wrists, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And then slowly lower the left knee, you've got it. Pivot on the left knee, left toes off the mat, right leg fully extends, reach and express. Wave that body of yours around in ways that feels quite lovely to you. You've got it, because now we're gonna secure through the left hand and the left knee, pick up that right knee, hug it into your best ability if you're able to get it, or grab your pant. <laughs> However you can get that knee up there, feel those inner thigh muscles. Tone the belly button, extend the neck, play, 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 and then release and express, maybe even waving them further back behind you. So important just to feel your expression of you, fantastical. And then slowly release the right hand, right knee, right toes, sit back onto your curled toes and take a breather as you feel the flexion of your toes. Toes are so important, okay? Just like the intention. To will your will, there's got to be some sort of intention. My intention for the greater good, first thing is always to serve for the greater good what's just in front of me today. Not worrying about the future, not fearing anything, but literally what's in front of me. You are in front of me. Let's do this. Tabletop. Curl the toes under. Knit that belly button in. 
So in other words, when I say knit the belly button and you're securing it, press the floor away with your hands and then let's hover those knees and this time we're going to lift the hips and move into our down dog. Once you're in your down dog with your heels lifted and your knees bent, swing your hips from side to side. So you feel the lumbar spine side bending. That feels so awesome as well as of course the thoracic and the armpits. Then separate your feet as wide as your mat. Knees can be bent, heels lifted. Secure your right hand, lift the left arm up, lean to your right side, and you can bend your right knee, and open up your chest towards the sky. See how much I'm bending my knees? And wave around. Good, and then thread that left hand under towards the outside of your right heel, ankle, or shin. Press both hands, securing them, floor and foot, and then cat your back and let your head hang underneath the right arm. I know a lot of you do in class say, oh my goodness, this is so much work. It is. Life is like that. Left hand touches down, downward dog. Immediately the right arm comes up because now you have reprieve there. So you're going to press into the left hand, open up the right arm, and lean towards the left side. So you're just swaying back and forth from sides, right? And then take that right hand under the belly to the outside of the left heel. Secure that left heel. Blossom your bum bum. So when I hold my ankle, I can do that. Some of you aren't able to get there yet and your knees are really bent. Yet. I always say yet. No pushing or shoving. But you want to separate your shoulder blades and cat your back and lean to the right side as you twist to the left. Okay? Know your lefts and rights. Release your right hand. Lower the knees. Big toes come to touch. Child's pose. So when your big toes come to touch, just take a moment to bring your knees to touch as well. And then allow yourself to reach forward, but we're going to walk our hands all the way over to the left. Okay, I'm mirroring for you. So off your yoga mat, take your left sitting bone to your right heel. Secure your hands so that you can press your hands isometrically towards the front of your mat. So you can lean and twist into that right side of your body and feel once again that liver, that spleen go, whew, thank you. Oh my goodness. All your major organs and the bowels love you when you start really helpfully being in the moment, taking care of yourself. When you're ready to in-breath, come center. Take your right sitting bone to your left heel. So right sitting bone to left heel. Walk your hands off the mat to the right side. Secure your hands, lean completely into that left hip. So your hands are isometrically pressing the floor forward towards the front of your mat. So there's isometrics involved. You really get a nice lengthening of the muscles on the left side of your body. Breathe that breath. Oh, there it is. Oh, thank you, my body says. And then in breath, come all the way to center. Find your tabletop. Yes, again. Secure your toes, hands and knees. Neutral neck, hover the knees for five, four, three, two, Lower the right knee, pivot the right toes off the mat, fully extend the left leg, open up through the left arm. Yes, we're going to do this again. And then draw that left knee into your chest. Open up your inner thighs as much as you can. Draw that knee in. Good. I'm going to secure my right hand, but it's going to augment as I take the left knee and move the left foot forward to the front of my mat. Okay, so I'm moving it forward. Come up onto my right finger pads now left finger pads so I can heel toe my left foot right up against the left index finger and thumb, reassess my right knee and then rise up. Okay, so right here blocks are really helpful because a lot of us aren't able to touch the floor and dip from side to side so this is the option. And, and you'll notice most often all of my yoga paraphernalia is around my mat so that I can grab it. And you do want to set yourself up successfully. So I'm going to take my blocks and I'm going to take them at my highest level. And my blanket might be a hindrance, but I do need it for my knee today. But I'm going to slide my blocks in line with my hips at the highest level in a high lunge. Just like that. Okay? So from here, I'm going to place my finger pads onto the left hip. Reach up through the right arm. And then bow to the left side. And you'll notice I just rooted my hands down. I don't need it that high. I could take it there without struggle. Without struggle. Some of you could go a little lower. If you're struggling, you've gone too far. If this right arm up over the crown of the head serves to be very painful, then you could reach it across and still bend to the left hip. 
Then in breath, both arms up towards the sky. Feel that expression and play with your arms and then take your right hand to the right hip. So you can't really see this unless you're looking up in the bird's eye. You can't even see the bird's eye, but we're just gonna twist to the right. So once again, you're just playing with your possibilities and your intention is to be here now in this very moment. What does that feel like for you? So really circumventing and moving through in that lumbar spine and thoracic spine. And then both arms up towards the sky. And then exhale your hands to either your hips or stack them on your knee to elevate the right knee because you want to come up now. So for that, that takes a lot of strength. And I see a lot of people unnecessarily struggling. So that's why if my knee were lower, straighten your arms, resist the quad, and then pick yourself up. Reassess your feet so you feel that your lunge is awesome. I gotta get rid of that weight. It's just not happening. So in your lunge, ah, good. Let's play. So from here, reaching your arms up and then exhaling your left arm down by your left hip and reaching the right arm over. See where we're going? So we're creating space in our rib cage. So I'm just pointing my left fingers towards the floor and I'm playing in my hips and I'm reaching that right arm over, mm, like you're pouring a, a teapot. Then inhale, come back up to center, and then exhale, move to the other side. So taking as many breaths as you can dance and feel that reprieve, oh, the muscles are just going, hello. Fantastic. And then in breath up to center, we're gonna continue in a twist. So I'm gonna turn towards the left thigh first, the lunging leg, squeeze my inner thighs towards each other, bend the back, right knee so that I can twist a little bit more and now open up the arms ah, to the left side of my mat. Do your best to not grip with your toes. So see if you can spatially play with your toes so you're on the balls of your feet. Exalt this twist if that feels good to you. See where we're going? So maybe that left arm can reach to the back of your right thigh and the left and the right arm moves up and back if that feels good to you or stay here. And on your next in and out breath, come back to center. Exhale, touch down. Step back into downward facing dog. Inhale to a plank pose as you adjust your feet. Slowly lower the knees. Sit back onto your shins. And voila, that was one side. <laughs> Breathe that breath. Slow it down. I know there's a lot of cueing involved, okay? Get better. Beginner's mind is like, whew, overwhelming. What's left and right? Just set the intention to be here now. Tabletop. In your tabletop, you're gonna play or rock and roll, feel what you're feeling, and then hover the knees, and then float them up into your downward facing dog. Oh, sway your hips around, feel that energy. A down dog a day keeps the doctors away. You got it. Oh, that feels so good. And then in breath into plank. So reassess your feet, lower the left knee, pivot the left toes off the mat, and then fully extend it through the right leg and rise up and feel the magic, feel the energy. So swaying around, we've been here before, feel what you're feeling. You can hover that right leg and that right uh, arm up and about, and then start to hug that right knee into your chest, squeeze it in. Notice that opening up through the inner thighs, maybe poke it up towards the ceiling, and then start to navigate that right foot forward. Fingertips come up, or your finger pads press down into the heel of the hands come up. Heel toe, heel toe, your right foot. So low lunge. In that low lunge, you may need that blanket, so put the blanket underneath your knees, make sure it's smooth. Rise up. So you're just coming up into the low lunge first. You've got your blocks. First thing, I'm gonna to move to the right side and sway to the right side of my lunge. So this is such a beautiful way to get all that lumbar stickiness out. Personal power, relationships and how you relate. You can take the arm across the chest if that feels better to you. You'll maintain and figure out what the breath, and or not the breath, the movement is for you, but make sure you do maintain is what I meant to say, that full expression of exhalation. Switch to the other side. So you'll notice that I use my finger pads to strengthen my wrist. So I'm staying in my lunge and I'm just, oh, you can move your neck around, feel that energy, inhale, both arms to center, shazam, and then landing your hands either on your knee to secure and straighten your arms, hands on your hips, and you're going to squeeze your inner thighs 
to pick up the left knee. So I like to adjust my feet so I feel more secure in myself there, meaning my stability, my balance. Playing with that and feeling that. <sighs> Knitting your belly button in, shorten up your stance, feet are kept distance apart. And once again, we're going to play with that bend. So I'm going to reach the right arm up, left arm just slides down my left hip, and I'm just going, yep, like a yawn, like a yawn on that side. A couple of breaths, feel what you're feeling. Uh, unplug those toes if you can. In breath center, and then to the other side. So you're just literally giving yourself a dance here. <sighs> Good, feel what you're feeling. In breath comes center, be here in the now intention, and then it's a twist, so I'm gonna turn towards my right hip, bend that left knee and tuck the tailbone down and present myself with this beautiful like sunshine of like light beaming from my fingers. So bend that left knee so you can get right on top of your torso. Some of you are going to exalt it. Oh, I almost, I was doing that, oh, and it didn't come out. <laughs> so find that, oh, wherever you may be, maybe it's here. And then when you're ready to in breath and come center, remember the breath is so important. The exhale, touch down. Step back into your downward facing dog. Blossom your bum, bend your knees, lift your heels, and then slowly come down onto your shins for either child's pose or virasana, which is seated on your shins. You decide what works for you, okay? Everything is about you. I'm just looking at the time there. Big breath in. So it's more like a, uh, the exhalation is surrendering and healing and letting go. The exhalation is so important. Let go. The intention is to be here now. Beautiful. So let's take the blocks aside and then just allow that your hips to move to one side and then float your legs over in front of your body or extend them as well really what we need to do. Bring your heels to the very front edge of your mat. Pull out your butt flesh. Bend your knees for those that, when you straighten your legs and your spine does that, just bend your knees and sit up tall. Got it? Feel the energy of just sitting up tall. Feet are dorsiflexed. Your heart is open. Your mind is here. Hi Tyson, and then reach your arms all the way out in front of you. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You're gonna to start to straighten your legs and round. Now you wanna round your lumbar spine into flexion. Heels are dug down and slowly as you scoop your tailbone, you're gonna roll out from sacrum to lumbar. That's the hardest part to get the lumbar to thoracic and to head. There you go. Come here Tyson, come on, come here, come here. He's somebody's in my backyard and he wants to bark at them. Come here. Now, for me, I like to take my blanket underneath my occipital bone, occiput, and just surrender it, laying down. Breathe that breath. Let your legs, you know, sway around, jiggle them around. Oh. Just take a moment. Feel that in-breath, and then really feel the sovereignty, the truth of that. I am so willing to let go, just let it go. Good. Mm-hmm, a couple more breaths here, just to surrender. Yeah, good. And then on your next in and out breath, when you're ready, let's start to bend the knees, reassess your lower back, your lumbar spine, imprint it into the floor. Take your arms out in the front and wrists extended. Plant your knee, your thigh, and your hand together with straight arms. Shine your fingers, flex your feet, and then elevate your shins at the height of your knees. You'll feel the tone of your belly. This is the focus. And now resist your quads against your hand as you focus on toning the belly for 10. So you're doing abdominal work. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And then hug your knees to your chest. So isometrically, we're working those abdominals, just like we did in tabletop, but we're off the wrists. Okay? So if we ever do tabletop again and hover the knees, that's not for you. You can always Hit it on the floor, okay? Just like this. Let's do it again. Resist. Right angle legs, dorsiflex feet, extended wrist, strong hands against the quads for 10 as you tone the belly, lumbar spine into the floor. Nine, eight, seven, six. Strong shoulders are down, head is down. 
five, four, three, two, resist, resist, one, hug your knees into your chest. And those viewers that are new, I don't really count. <laughs> and if I do, pay no attention. Hug those knees into your chest, rock and roll, because one more set of that, or one more time of that, okay? So set your intentions to be here now and resist. Feel your abs, feel your, your abdominals for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Resist, resist, resist. It's all in here. Feel that. Good, and then hug your knees into your chest. Fantastical. For this next one, we're going to continue on the twist. So let's just take the legs up and rotate the ankles and spread the toes and just give your legs a little playfulness. You can open them up, you can bend your knees, you can flop them around. Because now we're going to join the knees together, release the right foot to the floor, hug the left knee into your chest. Take your right hand to the outside of your left foot if that is not viable at this time yet. Then look at, I just easily get myself up and voila, my yoga strap. Some of you may need a yoga strap, a limited, tiny bit. If you're using a yoga strap, use your index finger and middle finger to scissor and then grip like a fist. So if I already use my strap to hold that foot, it's as close to my foot as possible with my right shoulder down on the mat. If you're able to hold that outer edge of your left foot with your right hand, bent knee is great. Fantastic. We're all here together. Straighten your right leg. And then let's start to draw that left heel as much as you can towards the crown of your head. Make sure you're not snapping your knee into submission. And then cross it over as you land your right shoulder down. So it's a twist. So a lot of people get, beginner minds get confused. Think nothing more than right hand to left foot, however you do it, crossing that left leg over to the right so the bum comes up. You are isometrically resisting left foot to right hand and feeling the twist in your abdominals. And in that, keep both shoulders down and feel what you're feeling. Most of you will be feeling your gluteal flesh. I understand, trust me. Keep both shoulders down, especially the left shoulder as you cross over. Some of you tend to just dump and let yourself hang out. Keep the left shoulder down and lift the left leg up and keep the right hand from hanging out. So you wanna keep it a core exercise. Good, two more breaths, don't you dare burn. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come say hi. Here it comes. <laughs> Get over here, Get over here. Because now you're gonna bend the right knee, foot on the floor, and now take the left ankle to your right thigh, adjust your bum, and then hover that right foot up off the mat. So we kind of left all of the shoulder stuff and we're in the pelvis right now, so it's a full spectrum class. Take your left hand between the thighs and interlace either your knee crease, both hands, or at the shin. You choose. Some of you, strap is handy, can thread between the inner thighs and hold the strap just at the front of the, th the shin. So as long as the arms are straight, Tyson, come here. Uh-uh. <laughs> Threading the needle, you've got this. So start to hug the left, uh, the right thigh closer to you and pressing the left knee away and then just rock and roll. Feel the rock and roll of that. Oh, that feels so good on the bum. Ah. <sighs> You got it, good. And then on your next in and out breath, when you're ready, I can do this one all day though. Stretch out your legs, shake them out, play with them, bend your knees, rotate your ankles, spread your toes. Make sure that a lot of this practice you do with me in this community kind of say platform, that you also do your own personality, okay? Left foot down, right knee hugs in, Left hand to outside of right foot, remember, strap or no strap, straight arm, shoulder down as you extend. So as you extend the right heel, the shoulder, the left shoulder needs to come down. It is a crossover then. So your right glute comes up, you feel the twist, keep that right foot dorsiflex towards your knee, and then extend that left leg down. Now I do understand 
Some of you have emailed me that that extension of the leg really poses inner thigh issues. So you can keep your left knee bent if you want to, and you can still find your twist. Okay, I understand because I do have femoral uh, um, nerve stuff, meaning femoral, meaning your femur bone inside here. And for whatever reasons, hey, we've all lived quite a journey as humans, haven't we? So be where you're meant to be. Be in the intention of being here now. Your will, it'll will your willpower to be kind and loving, to be in the optimal you. So I'm playing in this one because my hamstring is like, hello. So I'm bending and extending my right knee. <sighs> there it is right there. Moving fast. Whew, good. And then on your next in and out breath, bend the left knee. Take your right ankle to the left thigh. Let your arms relax for a moment. Then hover the left foot up off the floor. Keep the dorsiflexion of your right foot. Feel what that feels like to hug in the left thigh. Then threading your right arm between your thighs. You can interlace your fingers at the knee crease or in front of your shin, as long as your shoulders are down, your shoulder blades are down and your head is down. Again, this, I've seen it over and over. You have your yoga strap, you thread your hands through, index finger, middle finger, scissor it, hold it, pull it taut, straight arms and hug in. So if you're bending your elbows, then technically you don't need the strap. You wanna be able to draw that quad in and keep your arms as taut as possible. So some of you can really bring that quad in, but your bum rolls up and your elbows bend and your shoulders roll up. Keep the shoulders down. And here's the isometrics. Press your shin into your hands, keep your shoulders down, and you'll feel some great lengthening of the back muscles of your legs. Breathe that breath, you can rock and roll. And then on your next in and out breath, oh yeah. Shake out your legs towards the sky. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Fantastic, and now bend your knees out to the side. Take your hands, your arms in between your inner thighs. Grab the outer edges of your feet or your ankles or your inner knee creases depending on your flexibility. Here, shoulders and elbows stay down. Here, shoulders and elbows, or shoulders stay down. Here, shoulders stay down, okay? So you're playing with it. Start to extend through one heel, then the other heel, regardless of where you're holding on to, and play with it so you get your inner thigh activity. Oh yeah. So all this root chakra energy opens up, oh yeah. And then when you're ready, open up both shins as wide as you can, knees down towards the floor, shoulders down, Keep your head down. And some of you are able to fully express your limbs with your tailbone down, or your, not your tailbone, your sacrum. So choose to be where you are at, no matter where you're at. And that might be it for you. And that's perfect. So stay there, closing your eyes and breathing your breath, noticing what you notice, enjoying where you're at. Oh, yeah. Play, play, play. Mm, mm, mm. And then I'm going to hug my knees into my chest, release the feet to the mat. If you happen to have a blanket underneath your head, I'm going to invite you to remove it. We're going to do a coring exercise here. So extend your legs fully, heels down onto the mat, arms down at your sides. Lift your chest enough that you can tuck your shoulder blades completely underneath, hugging them together. Even lift your bum and slide your arms straighter in your forearms, your wrist, underneath your hip butt flush. So straight arms like a pencil, occipital, head down, chin tucked in. You can close your eyes, dig your heels down, legs together. Ooh, jai breathing, meaning you're breathing in and out through your sinuses, like oceanic breath, like, like Darth Vader. I'm just going to say it, even though it's not like Darth Vader. <laughs> For the, the non-Star Wars people, it's oceanic sound. When you're ready, we're going to elevate the hips by lengthening the tailbone. It's like a little sliver. The hips lift, your heels are dug in. The head is down, the shoulders are down, the palms are down for 10, nine. You're, this is a core exercise, eight, seven. You're ujjayi breathing through the sinuses. Five, four, three, two, and then surrender, shoulders and head. So you're splaying out. You could bend your knees if you need to do that and sway around, play, just be you. I like to do the core exercise about three times in the row. So 
This particular one is very, um, say it could be isometrics in a sense, but yet you're lifting your hips without bending your knees. It requires your full attention. So hug arms, palms down, head down, strong legs, quads contracted, heels dug in, head dug in when you're ready. Elevate your hips. So I'm literally lengthening my tailbone towards my heels and my hips rise up like a little bridge while my arms are pressing down. And I'm tucking my chin in towards the notch of my throat and flexing my feet towards my knees for another five, four, three, two, and then splaying the shoulder blades out and relaxing. And you could bend your knees and windshield wipe, whatever feels good to you. I'm going to do that one more time. So set the intention, be here now, you know what to do, you've heard the cues, beginner mind, you'll pick them up, hands, heels, head, squeeze everything from the peripheral to the midline, and when you're ready, elevate those hips, not bending your knees, just elevate the hips, it's tiny, it's humbling, for 10, 9, squeeze those inner thighs together, 8, keep on smiling, 7, keep on exhaling, 6, Keep on lifting those hips by lengthening tailbone five. Keep on flexing your feet for four and spreading your toes for three, two, and then surrender. That was a longer 10. Slowly start to bend your knees towards your chest. Slowly. As you do that, oh, rock on your lower back. And then I'm going to invite you to reach one arm over your head, doesn't matter which one, and roll to the side that that arm is reaching over into fetal position. Once you come into that fetal position, hug yourself with such appreciation and love for just being here today. For the intention of being in the now, willing thy will for the greater good. When you're ready to root through the top arm and extend through the top leg and pressing the floor away with that top arm, you're going to swirl up into a cross leg seated position. So once you come up, I like to use my bolster to sit on, move any of your props out of the way. And I know touching base on what is the intention and what is will is so important, especially during the curious times. The one thing I do wish to offer to all of you, because it's all about mind, body, of course, third dimensional body, but our mind, our soul, our breath, all of this comes together and the happenings in the external world. Stay loving, stay within your sovereignty, your truth. Listen to your gut, listen to your heart, and choose to make choices based on love and kindness as opposed to fear. So the greatest intentions is to live a life of love and light and kindness. If you take shortcuts and you get scurried in your head and you're all afraid, then you're gonna perpetuate that circle of chasing your tail like a gerbil in a hamster wheel literally your hamster and hamster wheel stop acknowledge what you're doing for the greater good the intention is to love yourself okay so we're back at the cross leg seated position but this time i'm going to offer that you switch your shins the non-habitual way so what i mean by that is when you usually come to a cross leg it's always that same shin out front and we'll switch it up okay and then this time we're going to use that left arm once again to hold that right knee, to sit up nice and tall, to wave that right arm around and find your twist. Oh yeah, get right into the belly. But this time, let's really hone in on rooting the hands down to whatever prop you're holding onto and sit up as tall as you can and twist more in the belly. Then turn your face over towards the left knee and nod it yes. Wherever you are in your twist. I feel, my spine feels cranky today, especially in my neck. And then in breath come center, wave it out a little bit, right hand to left knee, twist in the belly and the sternum, right arm reaches back and wave it around as much as you want to wave it around to secure through both hands, sit up tall, twist, feel what you're feeling, ooh la 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 la, and move your face in the direction of your right knee, nod it, yes. So closing your eyes is such a great way to practice because literally your eye gaze is meant to be past the tip of the nose, not up away from your nose, drishte, or eyes closed. The more you can close your eyes, the more you're gonna feel internally. Inhale, come center. Sit back in your bum a little bit more. Wiggle around. 
And then once again, inhale your arms up towards the sky. And then exhale them down by your side into your heart center, just like that. Inhale them back up towards the sky like you're swimming. Exhale down to the side, into your heart center. Do that a couple more times at your own pace. Just really feeling that I am in my integrity. My intention is to love and to serve for the greater good. That means loving my physical body, my mind, my heart, my soul. Good, on your next Anjali Mudra, meaning prayer position, let's pause here. Take a moment to be so grateful for the now moment and trust that the more you practice and notice your intentions. So say like a smoker who wants to intend to quit smoking. It's gonna take so much courage and strength, but the intention, the intention is to not smoke. So every time there, you're in a crowd that's really in a, you're in a vulnerable state and everyone's smoking, then it's really best for your greater intention is to remove yourself from that influence and be in a place where you can honor your intention. So it takes work because eventually you'll avoid that smoking so much that you no longer, oh, I don't need that crate. That's not there anymore. So you really have to work hard, just like this yoga practice. Beginners, work hard to be in the now moment because the reward is you'll stop smoking. Because the reward is you'll feel good. Because the reward is that you will feel the elated, the ananda, the bliss, the joy, because you have stayed in that intention with love and kindness. And I'm not saying it's easy. From my light to your light, let's end this beautiful practice with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let's take a deep breath in. that you have and let's build on that one breath one moment to the next moment at a time namaste and each day when you join me on the mat there's more insight and philosophy don't feel that you have to take it all in and get it it's like you know drinking water from a fire hose it's a bit much slow down one moment to the next moment this goes for all human beings. We all have things that we are truly intending to be, and yet we tend to fall out of that intention because we were not present. And that's all it is, just not being present, and that's not a judgment. Be here now. Namaste. Stay tuned if you want to do a little bit more of the core and breath strength. There's core and breath, or you only have 20 minutes uh, for the tomorrow. Just do the 20-minute core and breath. And if you need to totally, like most people, surrender, do the Restore, Breathe, and Meditate one. See you in the next episodes. And feel free to email me any questions. I am here for you. Namaste.